do What's the deal, y'all? I'm Rich Trapper, and I'm dedicated. Trip, but you won't say nothing ran through your heart as homie, but he won't say nothing on God. But he won't say nothing ran through your heart as homie, wait. I said, Rich Trapper, let a nigga say something ran through your heart as homie, but he won't take nothing on God. Betty won't take nothing. I'm meant to be. I swear to God, nigga. I used to be homeless, straight broke. My nigga fresh to the flow. Swear to God. Niggas chasing bitches, no dope. But I don't give a fuck about these hoes. I swear to God. Shit, I had my first baby at 12, and they think them niggas said the shit a fail. I swear to God. Rich Trapper, I don't fly no thotties out. Shit, I flew my whole damn family out. A little week later, man, my thumb is messed up, but we still dedicated. We still in this thing, man. I messed my thumb up, but it happens. Uh, second question is, what keeps me going? That's easy. My kids, man. Um, I'm more than a baby daddy. I'm more than a, I'm more than a, you know, a headache to my baby mamas and all that kind of stuff. I'm a real active day to day father. A real active day to day father. There's nothing more important to me than every single day being available for my kids, man. Um, I'll give y'all a quick story. I remember one time, uh, me and my youngest, his mom, we was, we was still together and um, we was in Atlanta. The twins were in Vegas. Um, I wanted to do something in LA. I flew me, my youngest, me, my last BM, and my youngest, I flew us from Atlanta to LA. I flew my mom from LA to Vegas to go get the twins. She got the twins and flew back to LA. We all spent time together. I flew my mom back to LA to, I flew my mom back to Vegas to drop the kids off and then her back to LA. And then I flew me and my youngest and his mom back to Atlanta. I've gone to those lifts. Um, right now, while I'm going through this custody battle for my youngest, man, I've been at the courthouse every single day, big dog. If I look a little bit, you know, um, exhausted or tired, it's because I've been in this courthouse, learning the law, going through uh, the Justice Resource Center, doing everything I could do to make sure that I'm able to fight this case appropriately for, you know, custody of my youngest child, my custody of my youngest child. But what also helps is in addition to, you know, obviously being able to be around my kids and seeing their faces and being a part of their lives and being the man that I need to be for them. A lot of people are cheering me on and championing me and championing, championing what I, a lot of people are cheering me on and championing whatever the word, is it championing? Is it champion? A lot of people are cheering me on and congratulating and celebrating what I got going on as far as me taking this effort to be around my kids and to get custody of my kids. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, I am a full-time single dad. I am a full-time parent. I don't miss anything. Soccer games, jujitsu, tournaments, spelling bees, science fairs, whatever. The, I'm there. You know what I'm saying? I don't miss nothing for my kids. So the amount of people that see me, especially black men, that see me as like, hey, bro, you know what you're doing? I'm going through the same thing, man. Keep going because you gave me motivation to fight for my kid. Or one dude was like, hey, you know, you think you can give me some information? And I had actually all the answers to the questions that he had because those are the questions that I had that didn't nobody have an answer for me for. So I did my research and now I'm passing on the knowledge and I'm passing on the education to other black men who are trying to be simple fathers. You know what I'm saying? It's like the dudes who don't want to be around their kids get the easiest time, bro. The judge force them 50%. You got to have them 50% of the time. Uh, you got to do this. You got to do that. Meanwhile, those of us who want to be there, we fight this uphill battle and it's unnecessary because at this point it goes past me versus time with my child. Now it's like me versus his mother. You know what I'm saying? And that's a battle and a fight within itself. So past our breakup, now the child is a weapon for destruction. Not a child is a weapon for hurt. Not a child is a weapon for irritation. Not a child is a weapon for anything outside of just positive interactions. And if you a weak man, you can associate your child and those negative interactions that you're dealing with by way of his mother with the kid. But you got to know how to separate it because the kid is innocent. The kid is innocent, man. The kid want to be with his daddy. The kid want to be with his mama. The kid want to be wherever the kid want to be at. You know what I'm saying? To the child's convenience, man. It's not like the kid love one more than the other. The kid want to be with one more than the other. Nothing like that. Just a kid is a kid. You know what I'm saying? The kids kind of just go with the wind. But <clears throat> back to the question of what keeps me going. It's the motivation of, my, of seeing my children. 
And it's a motivation to seeing other people who are in the same situation, who thought that it was hopeless, who thought that they didn't have nowhere to go. A lot of things that we go through as men, especially black men, we go through it quietly, man. It gets swept under the rug. It get, you know what I'm saying, pushed to the back. You know what I'm saying? It don't, it don't really get spoken about. It don't really get spoken about the way it's supposed to. You know what I'm saying? We, we can't be down. We can't have a hard time. We can't have our feelings hurt. We can't be victims of the circumstances or or victims of somebody mistreating us. You know what I'm saying? We're not allowed to be victims. We're not allowed to be none of that. And I'm not saying that I'm a victim by no means, shape, form, or fashion. But what I am saying is some days is harder than others, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's days where all I could do is cry with my head up and my chin up and my chest out. But I'm going to cry. Like, it just it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? And that's a part of going through it, too, because you can't hold in all these emotions. <sighs> you got to let it out. You can't just suppress all these emotions. You can't just bury your feelings. You can't just, oh, well, I'm going to be okay. I'm going to be a man. I'm going to deal with it. 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 Bro, at some point, you got to stop dealing. At some point, you got to understand that you don't even have to, you don't even deserve to have to deal with this type of stuff. So there, there are times like, man, where, you know, you just got to let it out. And whatever that outlet is, whatever that outlet is, but the pain, uh, the drama, the feeling of betrayal, the feeling of uh, lack of understanding or or confusion and all that kind of stuff. Oh yeah, that's enough to make the hardest man cry, for sure. And it don't make you soft, it don't make you less than, it don't make you nothing. Because what you crying for is something worth crying for, man. It's the love of your children. This is something that you created. This is something that's literally a part of you. Your child is you. To not love your child is to not love yourself. So to have that piece missing, yeah, that's enough to make a man cry. When a man doesn't have his child, he's unbalanced. When a man doesn't have his children, he's unbalanced. He might act like he don't care. He won't give a fuck. This ain't that blah blah. He's unbalanced. That's that's just a fact. There's nothing that um, there's nothing that we go through as men that doesn't require balance. So to make a child and produce that life onto this planet and not be able to love on that child and not be able to be around for that child and not being able to you know do for that child because of someone else's attitude or somebody else's frustration. Or, you know, even having to deal with a third party of a mediator or a lawyer. And now you are essentially going back and forth with somebody you never even laid down and had a kid with. It's unbalanced. And it's not, it's not natural. It's not intended to happen. That's not, that's not why God put us here. That's not how God put us here. That's, that's not how that's supposed to work. I'm not the smartest man on two legs, but that's not how that's supposed to work. As two people who have children or a child, or whatever the case is, y'all created that. So y'all should be able to balance that. Y'all should be able to, you know, make that work to the best of the ability of, of, of the child, especially if both parties want to be there. Um, how do I deal? Therapy. I'm big on therapy. I'm big on talking to my therapist. I'm big on making sure that, you know, I, I get out what I need to get out and not hold it in. Um, a lot of meditation, a lot of patience, and even more forgiveness. The biggest tool that I've had going into this entire situation is forgiveness because I could look at the mother of my child like, oh, that's an enemy, that's an op. Would you bam this? Would you bam that? We're going to stand on business. We could blah, blah, blah. Or I could just have an understanding that her life used to be one way and now it's this way. And, and when it was one way, we was together, you you understood what was going on, and you know, now it's this way, and we're not together, so your world might be flipped upside down too. What you thought was your forever is no longer your forever. So you might be going through those traumas, and you might be going through those heartaches, or you might be going through that confusion, or you know, just whatever the case may be. So I try to lead with empathy with that. I try to lead with understanding with that. Um I try not to look at it as, oh, you trying to keep me away from my child, despite the fact of I try to I try to keep that thought out of my mind because those are the thoughts that create enemies. Those are the thoughts that create hatred. Those are the thoughts that make you never look at somebody the same. Never. Thoughts lead to actions. Emotions lead to thoughts. Emotions lead to thoughts and thoughts lead to actions. You can't be so out of control of your emotions to where they turn into these crazy thoughts. You can't be so out of control with your thoughts, they turn into these crazy actions because that takes you away from your centerpiece. 
your ground zero of the children. And that's what you're supposed to be in this for. That's supposed to be the long story short, the forest beyond the trees, the end all be all. It's supposed to be the kids. How you see the kids, what the kids see, how you develop their minds, how you, you know, just give them that love, man. How you just give them that love. How you just give them that love. How you just give them that love. How you give them that interaction. How you give them that, that foundation, that security, that stability. Especially with me being a man having sons, how you give them that guidance and that example as a man. So what keeps me motivated? My kids. My kids looking at me and I tell them all the time, if I ever do something in life that makes you say like, hey, I don't want to be like you, tell me. If I'm ever operating in a way that makes you say like, man, I don't want to be like you. My daddy on some, on, some, on some lame shit. My daddy on some weird shit. Tell me so I can adjust and I can fix my actions because I should never be conducting myself in a way that my sons don't want to be just like me. What keeps me going? Y'all. Men, women, dads, moms, whoever might be getting motivation and inspiration it is, who sees my story, who sees what I've gone through. Um, young man from South Central LA, nothing more than a high school diploma, graduated from continuation school, kid hella young, three baby mamas in. Look at me, successful. Running my own situation, living life on my own terms, blessed by God, fighting for my child. Have already fought for my kids that I have and, and can continue to fight for the last one. That's what keep me going is being a motivational sport, made up a motivational source for y'all, being a motivational story for y'all, being somebody who y'all can look at and say, hey, he did it, I could do it too. I ain't got no high priced lawyer fighting this situation. I, I haven't gone that route. I'm not coming from a trust fund. I'm not college educated or nothing like that. I'm a man with the sense God gave me, with the ambition and the hustle to treat this case fighting for my child the same way I would cheat, treat chasing any bag or any amount of money you ever could put in front of me or any other piece of success I ever had. Because right now, the biggest success I could have in my life is getting custody of my kid. So, you know, that's pretty much that. Um, if I can give y'all any words of advice, just keep up the good fight. Keep fighting the good fight, man. Don't give up. It's going to be hard. It's going to be an uphill battle. They're not going to want to help you. They're not going to want to give you answers. But you got to keep asking questions. If, if one question don't get an answer, ask it a different way. Ask it again. Ask a different question. But don't stop. Don't stop. It's going to be an uphill battle. Don't stop. I'm Rich Trapper. I'm dedicated. Big